Hey everyone, I'm Lorenzo and in this video I'm going to talk about all baseball games on the PSP. MVP Baseball is disappointing. The game has no franchise mode and other stuff like minor leagues. Also in rest, the game is rough around the edges in many aspects. Not only that the game doesn't look that good, but the game even has frame rate issues. But luckily aside of these problems, the game offers some solid baseball. AI is nice, controls are nice too, so for some quick fun, the game is great. But unfortunately, without a franchise, the game feels like it lacks purpose. Sure, replaying games is always an option, and you get a season mode, and an addictive home run showdown mode. But since there are so many PSP baseball games with career modes, aka the franchise mode, the, this game drew the short end of the stick. Even if gameplay wise it's very good, MLB is a good start and considering that it was released at the debut of the PSP, people weren't familiar with the full capabilities of the PSP. A big concern for fans will be that there is no franchise mode, but you still get quick play, season and online. And you can still set multiple lineups and pitch ups, rotations, swap players between the active and inactive rosters, manage injuries, sign free agents and set up trades with the CPU, so the game still has a lot of depth. Also each player has different stats and behaves in a realistic way and the pitches are so varied that they are satisfying and believable. Also you have the option to speed up the game from the menu screen. Also the game has no TV style replays, close up or homer celebrations. It's more plain than the console versions. In Rust the commentary is great, the animations look good, player behavior is awesome, it's a solid game. Major League Baseball 2K6 is the same solid experience, with great looks, unlockables and fun game modes. In short, it's totally worth it. It's worth buying it if you want a good baseball experience, just like all the other MLB games for the PSP. They managed to make great games, a great series of games, but they aren't that distinct from each other year by year, similar to FIFA games, which kind of copy paste the same thing and add just a little pinch of something new so that you can you can say that it's the same game. But still, they are solid games, and even if they have their fair share of problems and glitches and long loading times, they are still solid games, and MLB 2K6 is in the same category. Major League Baseball 2K7 is a solid game. Right from the start you are prompted with multiple game modes, like Quick Game, Season, Franchise, GM, Career, where you make your own character and become a coach. You also get a situation mode, manager showdown, tournament and different home run derbies. And the franchise mode surprisingly has the Xbox and PS3 updates, meaning that you can negotiate contracts, call up players from the minors, sign free agents, keep tabs on your players moods, make trades and more. The graphics look nice, almost like the console ones but well, obviously downscaled, but the graphics still look close to the plug-bound consoles, which is awesome. And overall the game plays very good, aside the graphics, it feels like the same thing like on the console versions. Nothing feels cut out, I mean. You never feel like you are playing on a handheld console, and this is a big plus for the PSP. Major League Baseball 2K8 has new game modes. You could say that you get 4 different career modes. First, Pen and Fever, which throws you into a game with a team of randomly generated stats and you play the final months to win the World Series. This mode is great for people who just want something quick and epic. The season mode is familiar to you, the franchise mode you already know what it is and what it has, it's the one with the many management options. You also get the GM mode where you make your own character, you can be one of four types of coaches and in this one you get again the home run derby modes and even tag derbies. In Major League Baseball 2K9 there is a new mode, the farm, where you play with a minor league team. 
Also they ditched the right analog pitching with the face pi button pitching. Some may like it, some may not, but well it's different to pitch with the face buttons. In Rust there is a new commentary team and that's about it with the novelties. As in Rust you get all the game modes till now and all the occasional graphical glitches like weird player animations you stumbled upon in the other games too. They are still present in this one. The players start to jitter and it rains the immersion, but if you have good humor you'll find the jittery players funny. In Major League Baseball 2K10 they tried to imitate the console quality again, but this time they failed big time. The loading times are huge and too many, and the animations are jerky and ruin the fun. And the AI goes between stupid and incredibly difficult. Also due to the performance issues, the game is too hard to play. Not because the game is too hard, but because the tiny PSP can't run the game properly. Also there is a new mode, the My Player Game Mode, where you step under the skin of... You guessed it. Shrek. No. As the game mode's name says, you step under the skin of a player. But you play the whole match only with the chosen player. And... Oh, and they return to the analog stick pitch controls. In Major League Baseball 2K11, they improved the franchise mode, adding new features like allowing you to manage your minor league divisions and making the injuries and trades more detailed. In Rust, they tweaked the performance and improved the animations, now they are less jittery and the AI is slightly better. And it's nice that you can tweak the difficulty in detailed ways, but don't expect the game to be bug free or glitch free. It's just that they occur a little less than before, but they still occur often enough, the bugs and glitches. In Major League Baseball 2K12, I realized something. Here the differences get more and more obvious. With each installment, they kind of made the games worse and worse. I mean, MLB 2K6 was solid. And the next ones too, 2007, 2008, 2009, but from 2010 up until now, they kind of ruined the games. But as time passed, even if they downgraded the graphics, the game remained jittery and glitchy. And in 2K12, they really made it clear. It doesn't have new game modes, the gameplay is kind of bad with the many performance issues and clunky controls, they managed to get the game to be worse and worse with each installment. What was promising at first turned out to be almost more and more disappointing as time passed. But there's hope people, MLB 2K isn't the only MLB series on the PSP. But in tandem, MLB The Show was released each year. Let's get into this series and see how it turned out. After all, MLB The Show were always the more expensive counterparts of MLB for the PSP. You had two categories, either buy the cheaper but worse MLB 2K or pay the extra fee and get the better MLB The Show. Now let's get into MLB The Show series. It's not that different but well, it's a little bit better than 2K. Remember the minus one on this list? That was the first one in the show lineup. It was good for starters but it lacked some game modes. Now MLB 2060 show adds those to make the experience better. In this game you finally get a career mode, where you create your own player, get your own locker room, be part of the team you want to get in and train to be the best. Also it's nice that they added the option to complain to your manager. You also get a season mode and a home run derby mode and you also get king of the diamond an arcade style minigame that offers a timer pitcher battle duel. In MLB 2070 show you get a new mode, Road to the Show, where you create a player again, but this time you don't play every pitch of every game, you only play when you're directly involved into the game, and the mode has a lot of depth. It prompts you with many options, but the premise is that you start as a nobody and become a star. In Rust you get the same game modes like quick matches, season mode, manager mode, home run derbies, career, king of the diamond, there is still no franchise mode, but even without it, 
The game still is pretty solid. Also pitching is by far superior to MLB 2K, which had some clunky pitching. Here the system is way better and more intuitive, but still this game too has long loading times and occasional bugs and glitches. Major League Baseball 2008 The Show improves every aspect of the previous game, having better animations, more animations, better frame rates, clearing some of the bugs and glitches, and the stats of each player are tweaked, so that the experience will seem more realistic. Oh, and the AI is tougher now, so 2008 seems to be a very good year for most sports games. MLB 2008 included. Major League Baseball 2009 The Show takes away stuff, because why not? If they improved in the previous game, they need to ruin the next one. They took out the King of the Diamond minigame, so instead of fixing bugs and glitches that are still present even in this game, and are plenty, no, they took out something and left the glitchy buggy mess untouched. They also added a, a guess the pitch feature that does exactly what the name says but they should have focused on fixing stuff, rather than taking out stuff. Major League Baseball 10, the show, doesn't seem different to the other games. Of course that the cover and the roster is changed, but gameplay wise I mean, things don't seem so different. But at least now you get the diamond minigame back. Major League Baseball 11, the show, doesn't add anything. It's the same experience but with a roster update, which doesn't change the gameplay. So basically, Major League Baseball 11 is the same game but with a new paint job. Oh, and there are some slight tweaks, like for example the AI that can get very difficult. But even if they didn't change anything in gameplay, and the games are buggy and glitchy, still they remain solid experiences. They are good games, in spite of the loading times and the glitches and bugs. They are still solid experiences. The Bix is all about baseball on steroids. If you hate the baseball games that try to simulate the sport as close to reality as possible and give you a hard time, and like arcade games that are easy to pick up and fun from the first minutes you put your hands on the controller, then The Bix are the games for you. The controls are easy to pick up and the gameplay is extreme. As game modes you get exhibition matches, rookie challenges and home run derbies. So as you've seen, the game is all about extreme stuff, it's baseball enhanced. And as you fill up your turbo meter by playing the game, the game gets more and more flashy and surreal. On the PSP the game has slowdowns and the all purpose control on the joystick numb doesn't work that well, but it's still a solid experience just like on the other platforms. And as for the big store, it's disappointing on the PSP and PS2. While the big console versions improved the gameplay and made it content rich, the PSP and PS2 remained almost the same game. There are no legendary catches, no legendary abilities and no new minigames. It's almost the same game. The PS2 has the hit ability while on the mound. And there are some minor changes, but they still don't do the job of making the experience feel any different from the other game. The Rookie Challenge has been renamed into Legend Challenge and there is a new wheelhouse ability, but these changes don't do the job of making the experience feel any different from the first game. Pro Yakio Spirits on the PSP is amazing, it's almost up to par with the PS2, which makes it even better since you can take your PSP wherever you go, while you can't play on your PS2 on the go. Or you can, but it's more difficult. Though there is a downside, the PSP has slowdowns because in some moments it can't handle such graphics that well. But overall it's amazing that during the translation very little was lost, you don't have to get used to playing the game on the PSP if you've played Pro Yakio Spirits on the PS2, because you'll instantly be familiar with the controls. As for game modes, you get the usual you would expect from a baseball game, like exhibition matches, a career mode where as always you manage a team, 
the usual. They have different names like pennant mode, which is the career mode, home run competition, which will be season or grand prix. They have different names, but gameplay wise aren't anything you haven't seen before. Also it's nice that you can tweak how, le how lengthy a game should be, or you can tweak the ball speed, which is nice. There are also 7 AI difficulties you can choose in the game. You can guess how in detail you can customize your game. Though many complain that the PSP's analog stick can't reproduce the fidelity of the PS2's analog stick. It feels clunkier on the PSP. It's not the game's fault, it's the hardware's. But just know that even if the game looks like a PS2, there are some downsides too. The controls aren't as precise as on PS2. Pro Yakio Spirits 2010 was very well received. Reading reviews, I've seen many comments like, I have to take off my hat to the developer. Then, everyone seems to be happy that each year the rosters got updated, but there weren't any other differences between the games. I haven't found any significant differences between the games, aside of the updated rosters each year. It seems that mainly this is the only difference between the games. Now, I'm not that much of a sports fan to know the leagues in Japan, or maybe it was because of my poor Japanese skills. But I haven't found any differences between the games, aside of the updated rosters. Maybe some minor ones, like 2011 having more slowdowns, 2012 having longer loading times, but even this aren't nailed in wood. They are really minor differences and don't change the experience. So, if you want to get the best, I think that there is no best. If you're Japanese or if you're a fan of the series and I'm wrong, please tell me in the comments. Overall, the games are great. If you are into simulation baseball games, you should definitely try the games. They are amazing. All GKO Powerful Pro Yakio Portable Games for the Sony PSP. Yes, I, I had to take notes because the name is too long. Don't let yourself get fooled by the look of the games. Pro Yakio are pretty good baseball games on the PSP. They have their own unique quirks that will attract part of the gaming community. In this game, stats play a major role. Each player has different stats and you can really feel the difference. A less professional player is slower and has more difficult controls, moving is harder and slower, whereas a top player is easier to maneuver around and is faster. In the game, pitching is less great, at least if you make the jump from a PS2. The PS2 version has some really great pitching. On the PSP, due to the joystick knob, pitching feels less accurate. As for game modes, you get quick play, a career mode called pennant mode, a home run competition mode, and a range mode where you can manage transfers between teams, you can rearrange the players of the teams in the game however you want, and you also get a song creation game mode where you create your own songs by using a very basic tool. Pro Yakio 2 brings a new mode. The My Life mode, where you create your own character and become a champ. You also get a character creation tool, where you can create new players. And the manager mode is deeper, allowing you to fast forward matches and play only as a manager, without needing to play the matches. If you want, you can still play the matches in the manager mode, but you also have the option to not play them and fast forward in them. Power Pro Yakio 3 improves one major aspect, the controls. Finally everything feels better, the controls feel more accurate than in the first two games. Other than this, I haven't noticed any new game modes or anything else significant. The roster is updated, of course, and you get new menus, but I wouldn't call that something new. Even so, the better controls still remain a major improvement. In Pro Yakio 4, you get a new game mode. It's called Passion, but fans will recognize it more if I call it Crown 9. In this mode, you train and develop a team as a coach of a high school baseball team and aim for victory at the Japan National High School Baseball League. 
About this game, I found people on the internet claiming that their game was buggy. They said that, especially when you are in pennant mode, you can encounter the bug that the power of the new foreigner drops abnormally after a few years. Pro Yakio 2010 tries to fix one big issue the franchise had on the PSP from the first title, the loading times. They were always on the longer range. And with 2010, they tried to fix this. And how did they make the loading times faster? By deleting part of the sounds. Many sounds were deleted so that the PSP doesn't have to load them anymore. And this isn't a good decision in my opinion. Because the game loses its immersion. Without the proper sounds and without the many sound effects the game had, I don't know, it feels, it feels more shallow. Even if you get many game modes and a lot of content. In my opinion, this wasn't a good decision. The game loses its, its immersion. In rest, aside of the aspect that it became easier to acquire special abilities, the game is pretty much Pro Yakio 4, but with many sound files deleted so that the game would load faster. In Pro Yakio 2011, the music files that got deleted in the previous game returned. The developers realized that cutting the music would make the experience worse, even if the loading times would be faster, so they preferred to restore the files even if the game takes longer to load now. The game is the same as Pro Yakio 4 in game modes. And as for Power Pro 2012 and 2013, they don't bring anything new either. The best way to describe the games is by citing Game Catalog, a Japanese review website. Game Catalog says that 2013 is an unpleasant PSP version without updates. So to summarize, Pro Yakio on the PSP are baseball games filled with content that also have some strategic approach to them as each character feels slightly different due to each character having different stats. But unfortunately, the controls don't feel that good and the loading times are fairly long. The first games brought improvements in gameplay with each year, peaking at Power Pro 4. From Power Pro 4, the gameplay remained the same, and the focus was switched to the graphics. From 2010 to 2013, you can see some nice graphical upgrade, which makes 2013 the most complete in gameplay and the best looking game. Okay, so this was the video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe. If you want to financially support me in my pursuit to review as many video games as possible, you can do that on Patreon or on the channel's membership section. You will help me a lot. If you want, you can follow me on Twitch, Instagram or Discord. And if you want to see another video of mine, just wait till I stop talking and terribly thumbnails of other videos I've made. Thanks for watching.